Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, and I'm broadcasting live from Los Angeles. This is, uh, we took a break from the Academy for, uh, I think it's been a week or, or so, because we had our uh, online global self-awakening workshop for uh, a week six six um, days that we broadcasted and it was very powerful i hope you enjoyed it and i'm happy that i'm back here again uh with you and looking forward to um today's academy i was excited about it last night so um the topic of today is to trust, trusting life, trusting the existence. I'm going to get into that in details and uh, explain to you what I mean by trusting, by letting go, by this imaginary a person who thinks is in control and driving this vehicle. So we're going to talk about that more in details. For the moment, as usual, what we're going to do is we're going to do a simple meditation. We're going to take a deep breath, bring our attention inwards, and shifting the attention to the one-pointedness within ourselves, to this place where the observer resides. So take a deep breath, sink inside yourself. And this should be like very effortless without really trying, without trying to meditate. Don't try, just simply Shift your attention from the other world to yourself, the observer, the being, the one which is aware of everything, but not being focused on what you're aware of, simply being focused on yourself. So go ahead and take a deep breath and bring your attention inwards. Sink inside yourself. And now that all is well. Take a deep breath. For a moment, put your hands on your heart chakra. As you're breathing in and out comfortably. And tell yourself, all is well. All is well. All is well. Everything is exactly the way it should be. Nothing is out of alignment. Existence is perfect. All is well. All is well. All is well. Take another deep breath. And sink in, into yourself. And relax in this moment.
Just relax into this. Sink inside yourself. Just by simply bringing your attention to the one-pointedness within yourself, you dive into a deep silence. Your mind becomes quiet. And your story dissolves. It disappears. When you're in deep silence, your vibration starts to rise to a higher frequency. And transmission takes place. A deeper understanding takes over. expansion takes place and you have a chance to go beyond the mind into the heart of awareness. The wisdom of presence reveals itself into this moment 
in here and now and the perfection of this moment becomes very apparent that nothing is missing. Nothing is missing in your life. You have it all.
don't give in to your mind. The mind will come and say, when is this going to end? When is he going to talk? I'm tired of meditation. That's the game that mind will play with you. A thought will arise, will arise, and says, when is the meditation going to end? Just ignore your mind, whatever it says. Slowly, slowly, come back. Come back here. If in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, you went to Ramana Ashram in Tiruvannamalai, southern India, and sat with Ramana Maharishi, sometimes for hours, you would be sitting there in silence. And Ramana Maharshi would not say a word. That silence, the transmission of that, that would take place in the silence, awakened many, many people. Many people went through full realization, self-realization by sitting at the presence of Ramana Maharishi in silence. There was no instructions, no jumping jacks, no stories, only being quiet at the presence of the master. And the transmission was so powerful that would affect the entire surroundings of Ramana Maharshi. All the people, everyone who was in that vicinity would get affected. That's how powerful the power of silence is. It penetrates anything.
Papaji Punjaji, my sad guru, always said, the apparent life takes care of itself. The apparent life takes care of itself. The life that appears to be, the world that appears to be real, it takes care of itself. You don't have to do anything. And it's incredible to see that the more we, the more you recognize this, the more you let go, the more you relax into this life in the being. And the more you let go of this imaginary will that you're hanging on to the wheel that you are actually driving this vehicle. You're in charge. And the more you let it go, the more you see how it takes care of itself and everything is provided in a very magical way. In this mystery, the mystery of life. That in fact, you don't really need to do anything. The deeper you go, the more you realize, the more it becomes clear that you don't need to do anything. Anything you need will be provided. So what we're going to do is at the end of the day, if I forget, remind me, Hilde, Remind me that I give you guys a homework and I, wanted to, I want you to do this homework this week. And then we'll go from there. Hi, Elizabeth, do you have a question? Let's see. Elizabeth, okay, you disappeared. That's okay. I think our chat box is, for now, it's closed. Amir, are you there? Did you close the chat box? Anyway, if you have a question, kind of wave at me. I think our chat box, we closed it and we muted everyone because of this fellow who comes and interrupts. So, but I thought somebody wanted to talk to me. Okie dokie. So trust, trusting life, trusting existence. I've seen this over and over again, having five near death experiences, five times I should have died, five times I came to this point of kissing death. Death came and kissed my lips and five times was close to take me. I think in some level, some parallel reality I have already died. I should have been dead. Some of the cases were too close for me to get away from death. Now, why didn't I die in these cases? And somehow, in a very magical way, all these five times, my life was spared. So, Somehow, existence didn't want to take me. When you're trusting life, when you're in this place, when you start to see through the fabric of this reality, and you started to see that something much greater than you, the power, Her Majesty, the Supreme, is running the show. Something is manipulating things and feeding everybody 
putting things together or ripping things apart. You begin to see that connection. And as you begin to notice it and see it, you surrender more into it. And you can relax into it. Allow it to do its thing and carry on. So I'll tell you a story. I got a lot of stories about trusting. And then later on, I want to read something from my book. But this weekend, this past weekend, after our, um, our workshop Sunday afternoon, I go camping. I go in the desert. And I go to the Southern California Desert Joshua Tree to an area that it's uh, in the middle of nowhere and it doesn't have phone reception. So I take my motor home there with a buddy of mine, the two of us, we go. And I wanted to go somewhere. I wanted to disappear. I didn't want to have phone connection, internet connection. I just want to go somewhere very still, quiet, in the middle of nowhere and gaze into the sky at night and watch the stars and just be quiet and enjoy the stillness and the silence of the Southern California desert. So I have an older RV and uh, my friend by mistake, he goes to turn off the engine and then it turns the switch a little bit too far out. So the engine is off, but the electrical part of it is on. So what happens, it drains the batteries. So we're in the middle of nowhere we wake up the next morning. I go there to turn on the engine to get some electricity and, and batteries are completely dead. There's nothing. Now you can't have anything. No air conditioning, no music, no... You can't turn on the water pump. So you don't have anything. However, we still had some gas. We had propane. We could cook something. So we get up. We have no phone reception. There's nothing around. No one's around. And neither of us panic. This friend of mine's also a, a devotee of silence. So he's very advanced. So the two of us just hanging out. We say, okay, well, let's have... Let's make some coffee since we have propane and we can cook. Let's make our coffee. Let's make some eggs and let's just relax. So we make coffee, we make eggs. We're just sitting there enjoying being in the desert and doing nothing. We just hanging out an hour goes by two hours go by and now the desert starts to get hot the first day was cold and windy the second day we're there it starts getting really hot and we're just sitting there so we're at one point we contemplate okay what's the next move and i go okay well we're just gonna have to walk it would probably take about an hour walk to get to somewhere and hopefully we're going to run into somebody who's driving by and see if they're willing to help us. So we're just hanging out. I'm too lazy. I don't feel like going anywhere. I don't want to walk. I don't want to do anything. I'm just sipping on my coffee, sitting in the desert. We settle ourselves, put our outside chairs on and sunbathing, but it's getting really hot. And we're just hanging out. So a couple hours go by. By the third hour, somebody shows up. A truck drives by. Somebody's kind of lost, actually. <laughs> and they... And they drive by us and is asking us for a direction. So here we are. Here's our angel. 
So we share with them what they need to do and we tell them, look, we're out of, our batteries are dead, we need to jump. So it was a friendly person, they help us and they jump. We get a jump, we get the engines going, so the RV is back on business and we tell the person that, okay, we're gonna leave and they can follow us and we'll show them the way out of this area. So it worked perfectly. So what I'm saying is that when you're in a situation like this, for some people, it's a very, you know, they may panic because it's life-threatening. You're in the middle of the desert. The temperature is high. You know, it started at from 25, 26 degrees. And by that time, it was up to 35. So most people will panic. They think they're going to vanish or something is going to happen to them. And, but you kind of relax into this moment and you don't react, you don't freak out and you're trusting and existence provides out of, uh, out of a sudden, out of nowhere, somebody shows up in the middle of nowhere, somebody shows up and gives you a jump and gets your engines running again and you get to drive out. If you pay attention to your life, if you just calm down, back, back up and look or purposely go put yourself in situations that you are in, let's say desperation, you Purposely, you're going to put yourself in a dangerous situation, consciously. You're going to put yourself in a situation that you need help. Let's say you're hitchhiking, or you drive in the middle of nowhere, or you're creating a situation consciously. You're going to put yourself in the middle of nowhere and you create a situation that you need to be rescued and you just wait and you will see what happens. Well, that's one way. Another way is that if you pay attention to whether you backtrack your life and go back to these moments that you were in a desperate situation. If you look back and you see always in that moment, someone shows up, something happens and you're helped and you're out of it. You get rescued. Even now, you can try it next, this week, between this week and next week. Take a look at it. Check it out. See what happens. See when you need something, you need something, not that you want something. How that thing appears in your life. How somebody shows up in your life and delivers or the message comes or you get an email or you get an offer, something magically shows up and that's constant and that is for everybody on this planet. The invisible force, that force that has created this world and has created us and we put it, put us in here is the same force that is in charge and responsible to take care of its own creation. That which has created you and I, that which has created this world is responsible to take care of it. Did this sink? I'm gonna repeat it one more time because I don't think it, it went through. That which has created this world 
including you and I, is responsible to take care of itself, of us. Means you are not responsible to look after the world. You don't need to worry about the world. You don't need to worry about the wellness of this planet, of this creation. You don't need to sit down and worry about what is going to happen to this world. And what that's a lot of people do, constantly worrying about what's going to happen in the future. How are they going to survive? How is this planet going to survive? What is the future of this planet? It's not your responsibility, my friend. You don't need to worry about it. That which has created it will take care of it. You're just one of the components into this equation. You, you don't need to figure anything out. It takes care of itself. The mystery reveals itself and takes care of itself. And the mystery feeds everybody. Look at your life. Go back and take a look. Rewind the tape because you're very good at it. Because you go back to your past all the time. And you're checking things out all the time. And you're living in your past most of the time. So why don't you, since you're used to doing it, why don't you put it on a good use? If you're going to rewind the tape and live in your past, why don't you look at the moments see in your life if you're always been taken care of if you made it to this point that we're sitting here in 2020 and we're able to see each other through zoom or instagram or facebook or youtube and see each other communicate with each other and you have come this far in time to this moment means you have survived it. That you're living and you have a roof over your head, you have a house, you have an apartment. Obviously you have a device, a computer or a cell phone so you're okay, and you're able to hear me talking. You're able to connect and receive the transmission of this energy and to send it to, to send your love, to transmit your love and your silence and to receive it. So if you've made it to this point, means you're okay. How did you make it to this point? No matter how old you are, how have you made it to this point? What brought you to this point? Despite all your struggles, Everything that you have struggled or seemed like you have uh, struggled through, but you've made it to this point. Let's say some of you may have experienced a war or you have to move from one country to another country. You lost your country. You went to war. Maybe you went through a period of economic depression. Maybe you were broke. Maybe you went through divorce. Maybe your partner died. You had ups and downs, all kinds of things. And, but you're here now. How did you make it to this point? Do you still have a roof over your head? Do you still have a bed to sleep in? 
Do you still have food in your refrigerator? Do you still have some money in the bank? Do you have a car that you can drive? Do you have a phone that you can call people? You can meet with your friends. You can go to a restaurant. How did you make it to this point? You have made it to this point, whatever age you are. If you've made it to this point, what makes you think you're not going to make it all the way to the end? What makes you doubt that you're going to be abandoned? What makes you doubt that God is going to forget about you? It's a thought in your mind that comes and tells you that you're going to be left out. You're going to be broke. You're going to lose your home. Nobody loves you. Nobody wants you. You're too old. You're too ugly. You're too blah, blah, blah. It's, um, it's a thought in your mind. And you have to reject that thought. Just not pay any attention to it. You need to look at your history of your past as a confirmation that you have made it to this point. Therefore, any doubts come into your mind telling you that you're not going to make it. Thoughts, fear, That's what comes in your mind. And it's like clouds, dark clouds. And it, and it covers your vision. So you're sitting here looking at the blue sky and some dark clouds come in between you and the blue sky. So you can't see the blue sky. And then you buy into these dark clouds and you think the dark clouds are always going to be here. And you panic into it that you're, oh my God, my life is over. Just because temporarily you're having some dark clouds in between you and the blue sky. So it obscured your vision. But you need to just relax, breathe into this, and let the dark clouds to go by, to go away. And then the sky is clear again. The more you learn to let go of this imaginary control that you are driving this vehicle it's all in your imagination that you are in charge of your life you are the author of your own story you're the one who making the decisions you're the one who making these choices the more you let go of this idea of this concept it's an idea it's a concept the more you let it go the more surrender comes, the more you're diving into the flow of life, the more you are, you are disappearing and you're allowing the flow of life to take over and do its thing and directing you. This notion, this feeling, this sense that you are a person separated from existence is false. It's a false notion. 
It's an optical illusion that you are someone, a person in charge of this whole thing. You have nothing to do with this whole thing because you are not separated. You don't have any free will to be able to stir things to different directions. You can't do it because you don't have the free will because you don't exist as a separate entity to have your own free will to do what you want to do. It's a non-existing factor. It just does not exist. You as a separate entity, as a person, do not exist. You're non-existing. You're wasting your time trying to do this and trying to do that. And no matter how hard you're trying, it just doesn't work. You know why it doesn't work? Look at your life. Did you get everything you wanted to get? Do you have everything you want to have? You want to have, not that you need to have. Do you have everything you want to have? Did you do all the things you wanted to do? Did you say all the things you wanted to say? No, you didn't. You didn't do all the things you wanted to do. Things didn't really go the way you wanted, you wanted them to go. You wanted to do a lot of things, you never did it. There was a lot of stuff you wanted to do, you never ended up doing it. Your destiny took, took you to the way it wanted to take you. No matter how hard you were trying to stir the ship, the boat, in that direction, the boat went in the direction it wanted to go. So what do you do? You blame other people for not be able to do the things you wanted to do. Or you blame yourself for your lack of judgment, for lack of determination, either or, but you're not examine the truth of who you are. You're not examining the very truth. You're putting blame on yourself or others or circumstances, but you're not really examining what runs life. What is the drive of this life? Where is the hard drive of it? What's the engine of it? What is directing it, is navigating it? You're not examining that. You're far, far away from examining that. You're blaming yourself or blaming others. Oh, yeah, da, 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 da. I never wanted to marry, but my parents forced me to marry. And I got married and I didn't want to have kids, but everybody was having kids. So I thought I should have kids. I always wanted to be a world traveler, but I ended up marrying my high school sweetheart and living in a village. Blah, 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 blah. The story keeps going on and on. When you were a kid, when you were younger, when you were... 10, 15, 18 years old. What was, what were you dreaming? What were you thinking? Go back to where you were 16, 17, 18, 19. You're full of life, full of energy. You have your youth, you have your strength. Go back and see what you wanted then. Did you end up doing what you wanted to do? Did you end up being what you wanted to be? Go back to that time. Maybe some of you did. 
Maybe not. We have all these different ideas and dreams, all this direction we want to go to, but majority of the time we end up somewhere else. We end up becoming somebody else. Why is that? How does that happen?
at one point you're going to have to let go of everything you know and be empty and trust that that which has created the world will take care of you at one point you're going to have to do that completely letting go of everything your body will still get up and do things your body will be engaged in action but your mind is not you're completely surrendered to what is and then you will see what happens everything you need always gets taken care of it just comes to you it provides whatever it is you need money you need food you need home you need whatever you whatever you need comes to you it gets provided it gets presented that's how it works it's always been like that in a very mysterious way in a very mysterious way your mind will say how how would that happen i don't know i can't understand it how would that happen but it happens So between this week and next week my suggestion or my homework to you is to be aware and be alert of any time you really need something you're in a situation that you need something to happen not that something you want to happen and then see how that thing 
happens and appears to you. Just check this out. Also, you can examine the moments in your life that you were stuck somewhere desperately and you needed help and help arrived. So check that out. Just examine it with yourself. Take a look at it. Be aware of it. Be conscious of it this week and consciously examine it. And you will be amazed. You will see that when you let go and you're not really struggling to make something happen, you surrender to it, how the flow of life present that thing to you, whatever that is. Whatever it is, as simple as a very normal thing, um, you're looking for a parking spot and you're desperate and all of a sudden a parking spot opens up and you park your car. From very simple things to more complicated things and see how they happen. And the more you let go, the easier the flow is. And you notice it and you connect to it. And you realize that you're a part of this flow. So that's my homework to you. We're going to do the next Academy next week. This one is where... Um, Next Wednesday, uh, same time. We're also having a shamanic healing circle that's going to be on uh, Thursday, July 23rd. Um, if you want to register for it, go ahead and go to my website, zaratustra.tv, and uh, go on the calendar. Click on the calendar. You will see it. That's where the calendar of uh, our events uh, located and also we're going to do the ascension to fifth dimension workshop which is going to be on 25th and 26th of July and I uh, also have mentioned that before I designed the life training program it's a VIP one-on-one -on -one training program that I've des designed for those of you who want to really commit on your spiritual path and really want to go deep and get over the hump. And this is a four month program. So we meet one and a half hour once a week. And I work with you and I take you through various stages and help you to achieve your spiritual goals. All right, so let's see if anybody has any questions. If you do, uh, I don't know how to open the chat box. I don't know if it is open. Uh, let's see. Hilda, can you type something in there? Is it working if you want to send me a chat message? Amir's not, no, that's closed. Okay, we closed that. So those of you, I can see you on the camera. You can wave at me and I'll unmute you. The reason we have shut down the chat box and as well as I muted everybody is because of this fellow who's deeply in love with me and he likes to come on, on our broadcast and make comments. So, so we have, that's why we have shut everybody down. But so I decided that in this way, um, if I see you, I know you, you wave at me, I, I will unmute you and we can talk. Sometimes we open the chat box, Amir's not around, I don't know how to open it up, so we leave it like this. Um, looks like nobody has a question. Oh, yeah, all right. All right, Sharon, I'm trying to unmute you. All right. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Zarathustra. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Um, nice, you. nice to see you too. Thank you. So if everything takes care of itself, why is there so much suffering? And, you know, I guess, you know, I, I looked at what you said and you talked about the apparent life takes care of itself. Is it that 
are you suggesting that what we see and what we consider to be our life and this existence on this planet isn't real? Because, you know, I work in healthcare and there's a tremendous amount of suffering and, um, and things don't take care of themselves a lot of the time. And um, so when, can you when you that? say when you say things don't care of themselves a lot of the time, what do you mean by that? Uh, let's let's get clear about that part so we're on the same page. All right. So let's say a patient, a person who just has a bad outcome from a procedure. Right. From a surgery or an operation right. or whatever it is. Um, or, yeah, young people who suffer tremendous okay. that, terrible things that happen. Right. Right. So somebody went for a surgery and they had a bad surgery, correct? Yeah, or a bad outcome, yes. Bad outcome. And yeah. What, happen what happens after that? Oh, then they need, you know, they come home with 40 medications. It, it's a vicious cycle. And then they need another surgery and then they're more debilitated and there's more medication and there's nobody who can lift them up. There are the, the spouses at home. I mean, it's just, it's just one challenge after another right one challenge after the other so the the so you're saying that if somebody goes to the surgery and they come out this the results of the surgery has to be positive i'm it, it has I'm, to be it has to be the way we want it to be well, you said that things take care of themselves. Yeah, I, I say things take care of themselves. That means some trust. Goes in. Trust that it's going to be okay. Yeah, trusting that it's going to be taken care of. It's going to be taken care of one way or the other. Again, we go into this thing because we're conditioned to believe in a certain outcome Correct. Yeah? when you examine your mind the mind is attached into having an outcome to be the way we want it to be correct and that is very different than what life does so when the outcome is not the way we want it to be then it's an unfortunate thing Existence has a different agenda. Existence is going to do what it wants to do. So Correct. when we recognize Correct. this, okay, Sharon, if you recognize this part, which is very important, if you're able to not be attached to any kind of outcome, any results, if you have no attachments to it, and you're surrendered to whatever existence comes up with it, then suffering is deleted. You cannot suffer when your mind is not attached to an outcome, when it's not invested in some kind of results. Because you're surrendered to whatever way it goes and you're okay with it. So whichever direction it goes, if it goes your way, you're extremely happy. That's fantastic. But if it doesn't go your way, you're completely surrendered to it too because you're trusting that the greater force knows better. Then how do you suffer? Can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. So the example that you gave, you know, you, you were in the desert. I love, it was a great example of trusting and the universe took care of you with the outcome that was a desirable outcome. But let's say I, uh, let's say I'm married. I'm 70, 80 years old and I'm obese and my husband just had a surgery and He's supposed to be able to walk and take care of himself. And he's discharged from the hospital and he can't walk. 
and I'm obese and I can't pick him up to take him to the bathroom. I can't even turn him over in bed so that I can change him. Right. Um, and then how can you not suffer when you see someone you love uh, suffering? And uh, yeah, I just, right. you know, it's like when you love people, you, our, our, you know, our fear or worry comes from, uh, you know, that you would like uh, for someone you love not to suffer. Yeah, of course. I don't want people I love not to suffer. Or anyone, yeah. I mean, of course. I, I worry I, about my neighbor that, you know, he can't take care of himself or something. Right. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I have, a, I have an elderly mother. She's 93 years old. Uh, her sister, she's 89. Um, I have a bunch of older people around me that they have different health issues, different things going on. And her close, her next, her other sister who was a year younger just died a couple months ago. So my mom is a little bit suffering from the fact that her sister died because they used to talk to each other on the phone for an hour, two hours a day. Um, yeah, I don't want to see them suffering, but they do. Of course, I don't want them to suffer. You don't want people you love to suffer, but suffering happens. I can't do anything about it. They have to live their dharma. They have to live their life. Yeah. They have so, to go okay. they have to go through their spiritual evolution and okay. through their life's teachings. And whatever God wants them to experience in this life, I can't change I don't have the power to change that. Okay. So what I can do what I do is I hold space for them. Yeah. I love them. I don't judge them. I can see their pitfalls. I can see where they're coming short and how they keep suffering from the lack of understanding of the existence or just simply getting old and having an old body. The body is designed to get old, decay, and die. That's the design of this body. Nobody said you're going to come to this life and you're going to have a Superman body all the way to the end. This body from the moment that it is born is old. That's the part of this deal, okay. of this dimension. So the trust is really about accepting the trust is the karma everyone's karma and that we all have yes. to go through what we have to go through exactly you're surrendering to it and you're accepting it and in that surrender resistance begin to disappear you're not okay. resisting you're surrendering to what is and in that surrendering, the magic begin to reveal itself. Something outside of our vision, outside of what we feel and touch, begin to appear mysteriously. And that thing takes over. Yeah. Okay, I understand what you're saying. I mean, when you're sensitive, it's, yeah, it's fun to do, but I understand what you're saying. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a fine line. It is, in so many ways, very scary to let go, to come to that. You have yeah. touched it. I know you've touched it. I know you're aware of it. I've, you've seen it before. But to live in it continuously, to dive into it and to surrender into it, 
it does require a jump into this other level. And for that, it requires a certain way of emptiness to let go of our ideas. Our ideas, our concepts are what are holding us back. These ideas we have, these concepts that we have, that we've been conditioned to believe in, to see things from that point of view, is what's holding us back. So that's why I keep emphasizing talking about being silent. Being silent means what? This means you have no, you're not thinking. When you're not thinking, it means what? It means now you're not holding any ideas in your mind. There's no concept, no ideas. You systematically train yourself to come to this place of not knowing anything. I don't know. I have no idea. If you ask me what's going to happen next year, next month, and how are you going to live your life? How are you going to make a living? What's going to happen to you? I have no idea. I have no idea what is going to happen to what I'm doing, my mission, the work I do, my life, where I'm going to be living, any of it. I know that anything can change at any moment. Everything that I am, I position myself that it's working so well right now can change in a second. I can lose everything in a second. Everything can change at any moment to something else. Nothing is solid. And I don't know anything. And I'm not just saying this to be cute or cool or sound spiritual. It's the truth. The entire situation that you have that you feel like it's so solid and it's so real and that's what it is and that's your reality, whether it's hell and it's suffering or whether it's just cool and groovy can change in a second. All of it can go upside down. Even though you've done everything right. Look at the pandemic. Look at the situation that we're in right now. Who thought in December of 2019 that the world will go upside down, it will be frozen. A lot of the businesses, all of the world will be shut down. And a lot of them are going to go bankrupt. Nobody thought about it. Who thought about a few months ago that we won't even be able to travel? We can't even go sit in a restaurant and sit down and relax and eat without wearing a mask or going through all these da 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 da. A simple thing is taken away. The ability to go to a restaurant, sit with your friends, eat with them, laugh, enjoy, or go for a dance, or whatever is gone. Or almost gone, or twisted, or mixed up with fear and worry and anxiety. Never thought that that would happen. So anything at any moment can happen to anyone. Anything at any moment can happen to anyone and everything can change for better or for worse. And we can see it. We've seen it many times in our lives. But somehow the mind is so attached, it's 
into its fantasy, likes to fantasize these things. That it's so conditioned that it doesn't matter even hundred times you have gone through this process and you have failed or whatever, it seems like you failed. Still the mind doesn't want to come and say, you know what, maybe I'm not in control. Maybe something else is running the show and I can't manifest, I can't create. It's not me who's doing it. Maybe some, some other greater force is the doer. I'm not the doer. We like to believe like 98 times I willed to make this thing happen and it never happened. But those two times that I willed to make it happen out of the hundred, I only see those two times. So look at me, look at me. I'm so mighty. I'm so powerful. I'm creator of the world. L look, those two times I made it happen and it went my way. But that 98 times that it didn't go my way, what was that? And the mind is refusing to look at that 98 times. It wants to just hang on to those two times. So it comes to this results that I am creating my own reality. I am in charge. I have free will. I have the power. It's only going to hang on to those two times and ignores the other 98 times. And it's so attached to this reality, it wants to hang on to this world, this world. Wow, my world, my reality. I'm so gone ho for it. But every time he's trying to really hang on to it, whatever it is, is a love affair, it's a marriage, it's kids, it's work, it's money. Everything starts to crumble. Everything falls, falls away. But it's determined to come up with all kinds of logic and explanations that this is real, this is solid, this world is real. I am real. And it keeps refusing to look at the fact that every time it's hanging on to this real thing, this real thing falls into pieces, falls apart, refuses to look at that. It's so invested. And that invest, that invest investment into the results, investing heavily into results means I really want something to go my way. And if it doesn't go my way, then I'm going to be very miserable. I'm going to be very sad. Examine it for yourself. Spend this week, check it out. See that when things don't go your way or how much you're invested in making something to go your way. And then when that thing doesn't go your way, can you still be happy? Can you still maintain your posture? of being still. Can you develop this attitude in your life that when things don't go your way, you're still happy, you're still vibrant, you're still your own self, whatever that is. It's an investment, it's money, it's a love investment, it's health investment. Can you develop this attitude 
that whether things go your way or don't go your way, you are still very happy. You're still in your heart. You're still experiencing the love. So it doesn't matter if things go your way or not. You are on your path. Then tell me if you suffer or not. Because a mind which is free from that cannot suffer. It becomes impossible for suffering to take place. Absolutely impossible. Body can suffer, of course. The body is going to suffer. Eventually it will get old. Eventually it will disease, get diseased. And eventually it's going to die. There's no doubt about it. But the person, the presence, the one who's free cannot suffer throughout any of it. We suffer because we believe we are someone, a person, separated from the entire existence, capable of our own decisions. That's why we suffer. Because we make these decisions and there's a lot of wrongs and a lot of it doesn't go through. So we keep suffering because we're under this illusion that we're the ones who make the decision. The decisions are already made. Before you enter into this dimension, Ishwara, the Supreme, has a script for you. Here is your script. You're going to go into this dimension. These are the characters that are going to show up in your life. This is what you need to learn. This is your story. They hand you your script and boom, they send you into the body tube. And then boom, this becomes your life. And this is the life you're going to live. From the beginning to the end, everything is written. Your entire life is written. I know it's very tough. <laughs> it's very tough for the mind to accept it. What do you mean it's written? What do you mean? Your mind will come and say, what do you mean? That it's all destiny. It's all written. I don't have any choice. What do you mean by that? It's a big blow to the mind. It's a big knockout to the mind. And your mind refuses this. It's going to come up with all kinds of excuses. Oh, yeah, but Rama, da 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 da, Guruji, da 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 da, said this, said that, but I read this there. Or the entities who channeled for me told me that, blah, blah, blah. So the mind will come and bring all kinds of reasons and excuses to prove to you that you are a separate entity with your own free will. Why? Because it validates and it fortifies the existence of the mind. Of course, your mind is not going to submit to it because the mind is an illusion. It doesn't exist. It's just a bundle of thoughts. It's non-existing. Means your individuality is non-existing. That doesn't exist either. It's an illusion. You think you are someone separated, but you don't even exist, sweetheart. You're not even in the equation. You're just a thought. That's all you are. This entire story of yourself is just a thought. It never existed. And it never exists. First of all, none of it is here. 
All of it happened in your memory. Where is your past? Bring it to me. All of it is gone. The only thing is left from you is this moment that you're sitting here. We're looking at each other. This is the only thing that exists. The rest of it is non-existing. Your mind is going to come and wants to bring all these arguments and excuses because when you realize realization comes, the mind is the end of the mind. It means the death of the mind. So the mind doesn't want to die. So it's going to do whatever it, want, whatever it takes because it, want, it wants to exist. Your awakening is equal to the death of the mind. The ego, the sense of separation. Your awakening is equal to the death of the sense of separation. It means the death of your mind because your mind is the only thing that creates the separation. Because there is no separation. It was never separated. It's always one. It's never been separated. Except a thought comes to arises. The, the rise of a thought of me. Me. And that's an illusion. You experience that that's an illusion when you're in absolute silence, because in absolute silence, there is no me. There's no thought. When you're absolutely in silence, there's no thought. And you come and say, oh my God, this is so great. I love it. I feel the oneness. I feel I'm such a group. Yeah, because there is no me. There's the lack of this person. That's why you feel free. Okay, I've gone almost to two hours. So <laughs> it started slow and then it picked up. Sharon, thanks a lot for your question. I appreciate it. You're always a delight to see and communicate with and keep asking your questions. I encourage it. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next week. You can contact me at info at zaratustra.tv and my website is zaratustra.tv and you can reach out our Facebook, YouTube and podcast as well as Instagram uh, by Zaratustra 5D. I hope you enjoyed this broadcast and I look forward to connecting with you next week. Namaste. Much love.